Welcome to the Exxon Magazine podcast. Dive deep with us into the mesmerizing world of immersive tech, where we bring you conversations with the trailblazers of XR, AI, and spatial computing. If you're curious about what's on the horizon and eager to be inspired, you're in the right place. Tune in and let's explore the digital frontier together. Our conversation for today in the podcast are with two amazing ladies, Lisa Payton and Billy Goldman. And this is all about XR, which stands for AR, VR, MR, for communications and marketing. So Billy Goldman has been an innovator for Intel in press relations, sales, product marketing, branding, business transformation, and most significantly, in partner marketing. Her experience ranges on, from business marketing to branded entertainment, where her efforts garner impressive accolades with over 50 awards, including an Emmy for Outstanding New Approach, and 23 Cannes Lions. Also, when we get to talk about Lisa, we will find incredible achievements that she has done as well. Lisa is equal parts bleeding edge technologies, passionate educator, and data-driven strategies. Her hands-on experience includes implementing successful immersive and digital strategies for companies like Intel Com Corporation, Microsoft, the Smithsonian, Hewlett Packard, and Alaska Airlines. The quality and breadth of her work has been recognized with several industry awards. I can't wait to begin this amazing podcast about communications and marketing. Let's do it. Thank you so much for being here today, Lisa and Billy. We're super excited. How is everything going in your respective cities? And please let us know a little bit about your respective backgrounds. Uh, well, perfect. Well, thank you, first of all, for having us. We're both so excited to be here. Um, I can't. I love talking about this. I love talking about XR and AI. So it's a it's a great um, great conversation to be had, and I'm excited to see what comes out of it. I um, I've been in the tech space for over 20 years. I started off building websites um, a long time ago, um, back before WordPress was a thing, um, and uh, out of that grew the need to be able to kind of get the website scene, you know, um, that was in the very early days where, you know, people wanted people to come to the website and um, people chose businesses that were in alphabetical order so that they would get ranked in Google in alphabetical order. That's how long ago <laughs> I was working in the field. Um, and then that developed into moving into more um, kind of, I would say, kind of cutting edge, uh, bleeding edge tools like like social media Ooh, back in the day where social was new. And I immediately fell in love with um, leveraging technology to reach new audiences. That's really my passion and it has been for the last 20 years. And I've built a career um, on that. And today that has extended now into immersive tech, of course, um, with the advent of um, immersive worlds and, um, you know, the metaverse and all of these wonderful places that people are gathering and, and experiencing um, being together in new ways. So um, I, I now teach full time at the University of Oregon. I, um, I teach immersive um, marketing and experiential marketing at the university. And I also work with clients. Um, Billy and I have worked on multiple projects, immersive projects for Microsoft and Intel. Um, so I, I have my hands in a lot of different pies and um, couldn't be happier. So that's me in a nutshell. Michelle. And she's from Eugene. She's in Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> yes, I'm not from Eugene, but I'm I'm yes. broadcasting from Eugene today. There we go. Uh, there we yes, go. at the University oh. of Oregon down here. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm excited to be here too. Thank you for asking us to be here and, and, and really have this conversation. It's it's one that uh, we really enjoy. And, uh, you know, Lisa and I, uh, you know, do a, a monthly XR pub crawl just so we can have this topic of conversation um, and have a regular scheduled time to talk about it. Um, I myself um, have been uh, at Intel uh, and doing marketing uh, since 1995, so 28 years. And I've done it all. I've 
done PR, I've done product marketing, I've done sales, I've done brand strategy. Uh, I repeatedly come back to the co-marketing space as I have the most fun here. Um, I, uh, I get to be the most innovative. Um, I've won 23 uh, uh, Can Lions and a Daytime Emmy and all sorts of advertising awards uh, because of, of, of uh, that level of innovation. Um, and when we look at breakthrough marketing, you know, where, where is it headed next? Um, what is really going to reach an audience? Uh, there is great opportunity in the XR space, everything from augmented reality, mixed reality, virtual reality. Um, and uh, AI just fits in uh, just so nicely into all of these, these spaces. And, and of course, AI is changing and growing so dramatically and so quickly um, that it's going to be a piece of everything that we do, especially this space. Um, and so I'm excited to talk about this topic. And, and uh, really, I, I, I encourage others to join Lisa and I on a monthly basis in our XR pub crawl just to stay up on the topic. Um, it, it's, it's, it's hard to stay up on the topic. It moves so fast. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. We're going to begin by trying to have this picture of the journey and the transformation, how these have actually evolved. Because traditionally, we used to see from no internet, no websites, then it came the era of the website. As Lisa was explaining, then we had social media and all of these iterations and evolution. And now it's everything shifts so fast. How have you seen this evolution, you know, before you uh, you rise? How is the experience from you being in the industry and seeing the evolution of now going towards AI and these uh, big changes? Yeah, Billy, do you want to talk about that, the evolution? I mean, the evolution has been so significant. Uh, I think the biggest thing about the evolution, though, is it's getting faster and faster and faster. Um, you know, at first when it was the Internet and, and, and uh, you know, the dot com, you know, boom that happened, um, you know, we thought that was fast. Right. And then you start seeing all the content, and the video content and, 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 and how that exploded. Right. Um, and that seemed like, oh, my God, you know, a zillion videos are being uploaded a day, you know, kind of thing. And wow, it's moving fast. Right. And then social media, where it was, you know, in the moment, right, with Twitter and, you know, and, and happening, you know, in the moment, you being really, you know, kind of involved and connected and, and talking to the audience. Um, and that, too, was like, oh, my God, it's just getting faster and faster. And, and now with the AI, you know, space really kind of evolving, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a moment to moment evolution that we are experiencing. Um, and... Um, uh, that's significant as far as the rate of growth um, and change, I think. Um, and really talking to each of those evolutions, you know, obviously they have brought us to where we are today, um, right? And, and, you know, it, from, from the evolution of, of uh, all the digital kind of motions um, uh, evolving from what Lisa talked about, you know, with the initial, you know, websites and then driving traffic to those websites and then, you know, the social and the, and the video components, um, you know, to, to, to me, uh, uh, this has, has followed, um, you know, a, a trajectory that 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 is, uh, I think, surprising and yet uh, could have been predicted. I think with AI, it's just beyond prediction at this point. <laughs> How about you, Lisa? You want to talk to the evolution? Yeah, no, I agree with everything that you said. I think another big trend <clears throat> that um, kind of based upon this uh, this 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 fast paced um, kind of ride that we're all on is that things have, have exponentially moved from brand control, um, you know, expensive agencies creating TV commercials to yes. everyone being a 3D content creator. Um, yeah, you know, it, marketing it, to pole it, marketing, it's right? It's so I mean, that's interesting. You know, even, you know, even if we think about, you know, you had a website and then websites, you know, were kind of hard to make, you know, and, and they kind of were expensive. And then, you know, that was completely democratized. And, yes. um, and, and now it's like, we're, we're skipping over. I mean, in a way, there's just been this huge democratization um, of mm -hmm. content, which is really, you know, put marketing on its head um, and shifted away from spending lots of money to create your message to, okay, who do we partner with? Speaking of partner, who do we, you know, how do we sidle up to these content creators? get them excited uh, enough about us to, to have them do something with us so that we can actually get through and break through. And, and AI is just going to exponentially, basically everybody 
will be a 3D content creator um, and, and any day now. I mean, any day now, I'll be able to talk like I want, you know, a, a red, bright red Porsche with two doors, um, you know, 3D, hyper real, and it'll be in my living room. Like, literally, I I'll, will be able to do that. And like in the snap of, you know, just in the same way that you can create an image now with Mid Journey, I'll be able to create a 3D image, like probably within six months. All right. It, it, it's going to be here. Um, and that's going to be crazy when that, that happens. I mean, the, the, everything's going to explode. So, you know, I get very excited about the this combination of XR, the potential AI coming together, the complete democratization of 3D. Um, and then, but it, it's challenging because how, as a marketer, do you navigate within that new ecosystem? And some of us are on legacy, you know, kind of on these legacy, you know, foundations or traditional foundations that un frankly yes, don't work. Yes, worry about safety and security, they don't work right? In the new they don't, landscape. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I see <laughs> that companies are scared. Yeah. <laughs> I see that similar situation happening in the same a little same fashion with designers for example that traditionally had the power to create within themselves with the classical tools, Photoshop, all of this. And now everyone without any knowledge of Photoshop or any graphic design skills can create amazing products amazing. like concept designs. Yes. So yes. this is like giving humanity more and more the power to be totally independent, just as we became a little publishers, like for example, having this podcast, this was not a, a way, you know, to do it in the old times because it was absolutely expensive, just like uh, radio stations were able to do these type of things in the yes. same way. Now, even the, the education gets disrupted with the tools, you know, there by like offer and that anybody can do it without any previous education to actually create. So that yes. shift is absolutely fascinating. That's why we are all here today. Lisa was yes. mentioning something about when we do two terms like partner marketing. I'm going to reframe my next question based on that. It's like how this this can be ambition actually for what is called partner marketing because it's something that in the field of marketing maybe marketers right now might be a little bit you know wondering is, is it a thing for me is it some transformation that i have to undertake what is the vision for that what, what are your thoughts you want to take that one lisa no, marketing, par partner marketing, no. unicorn, you go, well, you go. Well, she, she's talking about an influencer model there and really partnering with influencers, right? Um, and and, 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 and I, that's kind of how I see her question coming. And, and tell me, Diana, if, I, if I'm not understanding it correctly. Um, but, but, you know, as far as influencer marketing goes, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it is uh, well utilized today and only growing. Um, and uh, those influencers are becoming content creators. And of course, as we just discussed, that content is being easier and easier to create every day. Um, and, 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 and as far as brands are being concerned, you know, whether they like it or not, whether they're on board or not, the audience, their consumers are taking over their brand uh, voice. And the audience kind of owns it, whether they know it or not, and whether they feel they're in control or not. And so really partnering with an influencer um, to really help create the content that you then put out, um, uh, you know, content coming from a creator to other to to an audience um, is much more authentic today than anything we can create from a marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's one form of you know partnering, right? You find the right influencers to really work with, right? Um, in my partner marketing motions, where um, working with Intel, you know, and partnering with the likes of Microsoft or. or Google or Dell or HP or Novo, um, we have influencer models. Um, you know, I, I am, uh, you know, working to push us into more innovative marketing. Um, and so again, looking for that breakthrough opportunity in my partner marketing motions uh, to really create uh, an engagement model that uh, allows us to tell a story uh, uh, about our brands and what value we bring, uh, depending on who the audience is. Um, so why, why can I not create a single experience that, depending on who you are, is completely personalized for you? 
Um, and, and that's really where, where I'm headed um, as far as uh, my partner marketing motions. Um, I'm a big believer in immersive, but, but more importantly, before we get to immersive is really um, uh, interactive. Uh, anything that actually has someone interact with it mm -hmm. is much more memorable. Um, so whether that be a snap poll in a Wall Street Journal article, or, you know, whether that be, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, constantly updated, you know, content, uh, you know, so these things where people are interacting with it and actually clicking on things, it just makes it that much more memorable. And then we'll get down to the path of immersive, right? But that, but that, that, that other step is really, really important to really create the interactive piece of it. Yeah. Did I yeah. touch on the question? Did I cover it enough on partner? <laughs> Is there yeah, anything you want to add? That, that's great. That's great. Thank you so much. It's um yeah, on one side we see the typical uh, partnerships that happen there with uh, innovators or creators that are there in the space. And the other one is the ecosystem of companies, big companies trying to establish those connections and how and this story. technology yes. is leveraged for that, for the creation, expanding exactly. on the creations that they are doing of these big companies. Thank you. So companies big or small, many of them are trying to navigate this landscape, is struggling, trying to know how how can we integrate this and actually does it make sense or not does it does it work for us at this point or should we wait more what would be the benefits or risks of trying to bring on board this type of technologies if we don't know if they are going to be you know long lasting or it's just a fad what are your thoughts about it well, let's start off by saying um, AI is not a fad, uh, and we can distinguish between AI and XR for this bike. So, and and I think um, if we go down, I think every company out there, small or big, needs to be figuring out how they're going to bring AI into what they offer. Like every every company, full stop. So. Um, and, and it's so interesting because, you know, based on if we think about influence and really whether we're talking about, you know, kind of larger businesses and partner or influencers, the overall strategy is you you need to reach people where they are, you know, through what they care about. Right. So, you know, you, you might if you're a big company and no one really cares about who you are, you might partner with a company that they do care about. Right. That actually offers us something really valuable, you know, um, because that's your way in. Right. Yeah. Same with influencers. You know, it's like nobody they don't they're not listening to me and my marketing team, but they're listening to, you know, Carrie, who just built this very cool game in Fortnite. And she's out there. So then they're listening to her. Um, so how can we. So it's about finding the, the people that they're listening to because we all know we're inundated with like m m messaging. So I, I, I don't know about you, but my email, I get hundreds and hundreds of emails a day. And like, I delete 99% of them um, because I'm overwhelmed all the time with email. And so getting through, you know, to someone, anyone you have, they, you, they ha there has to be a personal connection and they have to care. So that's the first piece. But so with AI, it's like, I mean, and just think about how not that long ago, Google completely owned search, right? Well, now with Bing and AI, that's in question. Like Google's dominance in search right now is completely teetering because of AI being in bringing in AI search and they're struggling. They're like, so they are scrambling to like figure out, okay, we need to figure out this chat search thing, this AI search thing, like ASAP or we're going to literally lose market share. And that happened in overnight that hurt like, like this. Right. And so if you're a company I can guarantee you that either your customers are looking to other companies to do what you are doing for them better with AI, um, or they're looking at a startup or, or so you, in order to keep customers today, like we have to have an AI strategy. Like we have to, we have to at least say, Hey, we're working on it. We've got you covered. Like we've got to make people feel like we are on it in some way or another. So that's, that's AI. And like, you, you know, if you're not, if you haven't worked AI and in, into your product offering or even thinking about it, you're okay. You're, I don't know if I can, I, you're beeped. Um, that's my honest perspective on it. And I, you know, Billy very well, everybody may disagree with me. I can, but, um, but if we talk, so if we talk about XR though, that, you know, XR is a different story entirely. Okay. XR is very different um, because no, I would not recommend that every company, you know, get into XR. I, you know, I, I always caveat these conversations where there's a time and there's a place and it has to be strategic and it, you have to have a reason. Um, 
So um, to that end, you want to first understand, I mean, it's, it's really strategy 101. What do we need to do? What is, the, what is the role, what is the job that our activation or campaign needs to do? Are we building awareness? Are we driving sales? Are we fill in the blank, whatever it is, whatever you are needing to do, you need to be very, very clear on what that is. Then who, who, who are we trying to reach? That's super important. We need to know exactly who we're trying to reach so we can go find them. Um, and then it's always good to have like, okay, you know, how do we want them to feel? You know, what do we want them to do at the end of this thing? And, you know, it's really just basic strategic. So once you have those all outlined and you really have a clear understanding of those things, then we can come in and be like, okay, we want, you know, to gain, you know, a, a relevance and affinity with the Gen Z audience so that they, you know, will be brand believers from the time that they're 19 to the time that they're 65. And we're going to have a lifetime customer. Um, and, you know, all of our customers that are currently aging out of our product will be replenished with this new batch. Like, right. Okay. We want that. So having all of that and knowing, all right, well, where are the Gen Zers? And ideally we would want to you know, do some segmentation and all the other things, but then you go find them and, you know, believe it or not, millions and millions and millions of the young are in these virtual platforms. And this is where they are. This is where they're engaging. This is where they're paying attention. Um, this is where they're building connections and affinities and, you know, where they're playing out their identities, right? We all know as a brand, you want people to identify with your brand. You want someone to be a Starbucks person because they want, they, they want to be, you know, associated with Starbucks. Well, you know, in order to get that level of connection, you have to go where they are and you have to speak their language and you have to offer them value. And so um, XR and immersive tech can do all of those things if done well. Um, but that being said, if you're a company who's, you know, looking to connect with um, your demographic between the ages of 75 and 80, and you're like trying to sell, I don't know, landline telephones, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to use XR. Um, so it's, that's, you know, my kind of my longest answer for, for the question, but it's, it's a good one. I, the one final thing I'll say, and I'm going to pass it over to Billy because I know she'll have some input too. Even though I don't, I don't think that everybody needs to do XR or immersive or everyone needs to be thinking about it and at least consciously choosing to not do it, right? You can't, like, you, if you're ignoring it, again, you're bleeped, okay? You're in this category, like, you can't be ignoring it. That's not the way, way to go. You need to consciously be making the decision and have a long-term strategic outlook that that, you know, that requires thinking and taking that bird's eye view and understanding what the technology can do. I mean, I think a big disconnect in a lot of what I think the value is a Billy of our XR pub crawl that we do is that we allow marketers who may not be as savvy with some of these platforms to really understand the capabilities of what they can actually do and how they can actually engage because so many of them don't even know the, what's possible. Yeah. Um, and so opening their eyes because once, I mean, we have a savvy crew that come like we're, we, you know, we see, we're seasoned veterans. We know how to do marketing we've been doing it for years and years but where the disconnect is is like knowing and lighting up like oh i can do that with that you know and that's the magic and, and so getting in and, and rolling up your sleeves and going into these places going into Fortnite, going into roblox i mean i spent watching us do it last weekend <laughs> you know in ralph loren's race to greatness um experience in Fortnite, and i played the whole thing out why because i wanted to understand how they were how they were doing that activation um it took me about 10 minutes it was okay it, um it, it, but, but but i had to do that in order to to under, truly understand how to, you know, how how users are engaging on that platform. And I think that that's so important for, for all of us marketers is to be able to go in and, and understand and speak the language of the platform. And um, unfortunately, I don't think that there are enough resources um, to that really help us and, and allow us to do that. So that's yeah. my spiel. I, I would add, you know, for businesses, you know, uh, paying attention to the space is so critical because it's changing so fast. Um, you know, every three months, you know, it's like a whole different landscape. And I would say there are many tools for a business um, that would actually help them save time that already exist today. And so if they're not tapping into and playing with and just understanding, starting to kind of think about it, um, they're, they're, they're missing the boat. And, and there's so many free opportunities out there to kind of, you know, test it and, and see what it does. Um, but really, it, it could be a time saver today. And really ditto everything she said on XRBs. Most companies should not be dabbling in this space unless they want an embodied experience. And really, they, you know, not everyone should be there. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So for marketing, when it comes to marketing, creating these strategies, campaigns, and infusing this with the storytelling, which is something that resonates with people from the emotion that make them to, you know, enjoy the experience. What are your thoughts on, particularly on approaching storytelling using XR and AI? Or even if it's when we, after analysis is not XR, how is it used, like being used with AI, which is something that, as Lisa said, should be um, a standard now, becoming a standard in companies now? <laughs> Yeah, I love that question. And I'll just I'll just kick it off and then I'm gonna kick it to you, Billy. I, I'll just say that storytelling is the way in. And and time and time again, and I've I data proves it. Um I read so many articles on on the power of storytelling. And that is XR's superpower. XR is like allows you to do the most amazing story storytelling um and really build that. Uh, connection in ways that we've never been able to before. Um, yeah. You know, so that if, you know, to create that emotional connection and to really drive a meaningful story, XR is a really powerful tool. And by XR, of course, I mean all of the, you know, all of the R's, the VR's, the R, like whatever the flavor is of technology that will allow you to reach that person and, and draw them in. Um, and it starts with storytelling. It does. And, and so um, when, with that, and I, Billy, Billy I'll, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you. And, and just one, so AI um, can be added into that um, workflow and, you know, with, in a lot of cool ways um, and help, helping us navigate the storytelling, making sure it's, you know, correct, you know, connecting with, with the right persona. Um, there are a lot of ways that AI can, can play a role um, from ideation to designing to, you know, fill in the blank. I'll add to that, you know, one of the things that Lisa and I are really kind of working on right now and, and really trying to make happen is um, in my line of work, you know, case studies are a really big thing. And a case study is usually a three to five, you know, written document that someone needs to read, right? And they're very valuable. They're very well read. Um, but but what if we brought that into a you know, virtual environment and actually had to experience that case study? And then with AI, we actually know, you know, who you are as an audience. And so that story gets tuned and changed depending on who you are. If you're a CIO, obviously the information you're gonna want is an executive briefing and you know, understanding how this is gonna impact your business versus if you're an IT manager, you know, walking through, you're gonna to wanna to understand where all the, you know, the, the problems might exist and what things you need to be careful of and how to really implement it. And so while we can use the same environment, you know, depending on who the audience is, we can tell a very different story and a story that's actually tuned specifically for you right um and so this is this is the the opportunity that we have you know to really kind of make that leap and bring something to life and have you experience it not just what we did. yeah i love that absolutely i think developers and designers from the future are gonna have to be dealing with something that they never imagined before as understanding at least in general how these models, these adversarial networks are used inside these experiences to understand yes. the, the, the users' um, expressions, the gestures, yes. deeply understand what is what resonating and changing it. the environment based on exactly what they are feeling, what they are experiencing right yes. away, based on emotion. You know, like yes. I'm entering the experience, I'm feeling a little bit sad, nobody knows. But by reading all of this, now this is interesting because as well as it is beautiful because it's coming from beautiful human beings that are just being on the beauty of this, there can be other leveraging, right, of uses of this with an intention that is purely about, you know, like we're going to manipulate right we're gonna manipulate these feelings because now we know them and this is it's so, it's, it's so, so it's possible today even oh, I, really the, it, you know the technologies exist it's a matter of bringing them together like for yeah. example the muse that you know you, you meditate with that sits on your head and it reads your brain waves right yeah. you know, you know, if, if you can connect that, then AI can adjust um, and, and, and affect things, you know, if, if your brain waves are red. I mean, there, there are so many things that we're just on the precipice of actually making happen, right? It's like a black mirror, but hopefully not so dark. Yes, <laughs> yes. This doesn't hear beautiful things. And um, hopefully I say that a beautiful future that I envision is 
infusing empathy, empathy in in all models that or artificial intelligence created. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So that would be the amazing because then there yes. is compassion. You know, there is all of this this uh, resonating, maybe logical, but resonating concepts of what it is to be good, right? With humans, yes. with any other species around. So. Yeah, that's a beautiful, a beautiful um, conversation uh, as well, of course, even even speaking about machines. It's a human conversation as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. It has been amazing. I just like quickly to discuss about the XR AI marketing brief. She's an invitation you have for the for the listeners, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's two ways. I mean, we we, were, we have an active community of, of pioneers, people that are out there trying to kind of, you know, explore together, right, with some support. And there are two ways that you can intersect with our community. We've already mentioned the XR Pub Crawl multiple times, and um, it's the fourth Friday of every month, um, 12 noon Pacific time. It's virtual. Um, it's it's immersive in all the best ways. Um, and there's an invite on LinkedIn. So if you connect with Billy or I on LinkedIn, um, you'll get the you'll see the event um, or I, I've shared a link as well where you can get all of the details on the Pub Crawl. Um, in between, because a meeting every month is not enough uh, because things are moving so quickly, as we mentioned, um, I do a bi-monthly newsletter um, and it's the XR AI marketing brief. It includes um, all of the on-demand recordings of the pub crawl, has highlights of the pub crawl. Um, I have the latest XR and AI marketing news and tools and then a little kind of editorial um, piece from me of perspective, if you will. So it's a beautiful newsletter that comes out twice a month. And I would love for any and all to sign up for that. It's also distributed on LinkedIn. So it's very easy to just go and get it there. Um, yeah, I also have some of um, the uh, additions on my website at lisapayton.com as well. So would love to bring people into the community. If you're interested in using XR and AI for reaching people and building communities um, and getting messages out there join us yeah and staying up to date because that's the hardest piece let us make it easy Love for to you. have you <laughs> absolutely thank you so much it's uh, changing all the oh. time and we need to be you know be, be uh, up to date and um understanding how how that is impacting our careers or the industry where we are and projecting from there to others as well when we have a little bit of that understanding which is like uh, is kindness part of that shading so thank you so yes. much do uh, do you feel that i should have asked any other uh thing that i'm missing something what are your thoughts no i thought that was great yeah no i've had a wonderful time thank you yeah. thanks okay. for having us on Yes, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be speaking about these topics because as we can feel our energy, we spark when we speak about this storytelling, yes. XR, AI, all the possibilities is so awesome. And this is something that we leaders understand this. <laughs> so uh, it's always amazing. I, I think the, the listeners um, can feel the energy. So yeah, oh. if you feel that there is a family member or a friend who might benefit from this podcast, please share the link. We were discussing at the beginning. It is a little bit rare, not so often, that we're speaking about XR, AI, and marketing. So it's a little specialized and, and for all marketers out there, for companies, this pertains to all of these industries. It would be great to learn and start understanding of how this is playing in the ecosystem with these technologies. Thank cool. you so much for you. Uh, your attention and see you in the next episode. Bye for all now. Right.